Tonight on Connecticut's news station, arrests made in yet another smash and grab robbery here in Connecticut. How the suspects got into the stereo store on the Berlin Turnpike and where the case against them stands tonight. As the nation reflects on the death of one of Connecticut's most influential politicians, we're learning more about the plans to say a final goodbye to Joe Lieberman. The details on tomorrow's funeral. Four police officers accused in the Randy Cox case are headed for trial after a judge denied their request to enter a program that would erase the charges. We'll tell you what happens next. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we begin tonight on the Weather Watch. Today's showers are sticking around overnight, but there could be some good news for your morning commute and the all-important weekend <laughs> behind that. Thanks for joining us for the News at 10. I'm Brent Hart. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Taking a look at the radar right now, you can see that system still hanging around this evening. And those showers are on top of an already record-breaking amount we saw this month. It has been a soggy one. Mm -hmm. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now with a timeline on when we can expect things to clear up. Rachel. Well, we're already seeing the back edge of the rain moving through parts of Litchfield County. But even though we're starting to dry out in western Connecticut, we still have a long ways to go in eastern areas where you're even seeing some heavier downpours. So that drying trend will be very slow from west to east from now through about five or six o'clock in the morning. Still a lot of rain to the south of us, but this entire band is now starting to slowly pivot to the east. We could see an additional tenth of an inch to two tenths of an inch of rain, even though there is still a flood watch in effect for Wyndham County. Honestly, I'm not concerned about flooding in Connecticut. Here's a look at the future radar midnight. Again, we're seeing more in western Connecticut drying out, still raining though in the Hartford area and eastern Connecticut. But I'm going to advance to about 5 a.m. and notice 99% of the state is already dry, except for maybe southeastern Connecticut. And by 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, it is gone. So we wake up with clouds. Then those clouds break for sunshine. It does turn breezy as we head through the afternoon and especially the evening. High temperatures will climb in the low to mid 50s. There is a chance for a couple showers over the weekend, but the timing may work in our favor. We'll explain your Easter weekend forecast coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Well, new at 10 tonight, Hamden police have arrested two teenagers who they say carried knives onto school grounds. The police responded to the ACES school on Leader Hill Drive today. The school says two students got into a fight with another student and were suspended. Police say those two students came back to the school and one pulled the fire alarm when those two suspended students were detained by school security. Police found the knives on them. No one was hurt. Two men accused of breaking into a store on the Berlin Turnpike and stealing car stereo equipment have been arrested. Newington police arrested the two suspects months after the incident happened and New England audio and tinting. Police say the two men drove a vehicle into the front of the store, breaking the storefront window to get in and steal that stereo equipment. Both men were arraigned in court on numerous charges this week. Law enforcement in North Branford still searching for a suspect in a deadly hit and run this morning. A man was hit on Foxen Road shortly after 7 a.m. Police say he died on scene. His identity has not been released at this time. Police tell us they are still trying to get in touch with the victim's family. The driver who hit the man did not stay on scene. Call North Branford Police if you have any information about what happened. Meriden Police are also investigating a deadly hit and run. Uh, this was a crash here. Police say a man was hit by a truck on North Broad Street last night around 7.30. An SUV that was behind the truck then hit the man as well. The man died at the scene. Police say the driver of the truck drove away. But he did show up at the police department a few hours after the crash. The driver of the SUV stayed on scene. A Willimantic police officer is on paid administrative leave tonight. He has been charged with DUI and evading responsibility. Police say Eduardo Garcia was arrested yesterday in connection to an incident that happened outside an apartment on Main Street earlier this month. Garcia was off duty at the time. Police did not go into detail about what they believe happened. He'll appear in court next month. Well, as Connecticut and the entire country continue to reflect on the life and legacy of Joe Lieberman, we're learning more about the plans to lay him to rest. Tomorrow morning, friends, family, and former colleagues will gather to honor the former senator, vice presidential nominee, and presidential candidate. Now, Lieberman died yesterday at the age of 82. His family says he suffered a fall in New York City. 
Funeral services are planned for tomorrow morning at 1030 at Congregation Agadath Shalom on Lieber in Lieberman's hometown of Stamford. An additional memorial service will be announced at a later date. Governor Ned Lamont, Senators Chris Murphy and Richard Blumenthal, along with former Senator Chris Dodd, are all expected to attend, along with Lieberman's wife and four children. Fox 61 is committed to covering the funeral tomorrow. We'll be taking you to Stamford during our morning show as people begin arriving and then streaming the service live on air, online and on the free Fox 61 news app. Well, to Waterbury now, where federal leaders are pushing for the approval of a new bill to get more money for mental health assistance in schools. Leading the charge are Connecticut's two Congresswomen, Rosa DeLauro and Johanna Hayes. They visited Westside Middle School to spread the word today. Fox 61's Julie LeBlanc shares their message. Connecticut's congressional delegation and those who work at schools like this one say our state and our country is facing a mental health crisis and they feel the best way to address that is to meet the kids where they're at, at school. And if it wasn't for the guidance counselors and support staff in the school, I wouldn't be where I am today. Like so many other students, Nadina Badrasane, a junior at Waterbury Arts Magnet School, recently hit what she calls a low point with her mental health. I was trying so hard to do well in school. I wanted perfect grades, and it got to the point where I was ever working myself. I was working like hours a day on homework. One of her teachers brought it to the attention of the school counselor who intervened. I've changed since then. I'm never going to go back to overworking myself to that level. Only problem is there are not enough people like them to deal with the magnitude of the issue in schools. It's something Connecticut's federal leaders are working to fix with a new piece of legislation. It's called the Expanding Access to Mental Health Services in Schools Act. There would be funds available, grants available to the schools to be able to uh, recruit and retain mental health providers. If passed, Waterbury Superintendent Dr. Verna Ruffin already knows how she wants to implement it through a partnership with local colleges. To secure a pipeline of potential hires that we could invest in and that we could help prepare and train and hire for Waterbury Public Schools. Adding to the arsenal of services they do have, which includes at least one counselor in every school, social workers, a program through an outside provider, and a brand new 24-7 mental health walk-in center in downtown Waterbury. It's a menu of services. Uh, it's simply not enough. A menu they hope grows from here as the need grows too. They have made me a lot happier and I think I'm at the happiest I've ever been in school because of them. Now at this point the legislation is just a proposal but Connecticut's leaders are working to gain the bipartisan support they need to move it forward. We are in Waterbury, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Four of the five former New Haven police officers facing charges in the Randy Cox case will go to trial. Today, a judge denied bids for those former officers to enter a program that would erase the criminal charges against them. Luis Rivera, Ronald Presley, Oscar Diaz, and Betsy Segui are accused of mistreating Cox while transporting him to the New Haven police station in a van. Cox became paralyzed from injuries he suffered in the back of that van when the officer driving it stopped abruptly. Abruptly, Cox was not secured with a seatbelt and that sent him flying into the wall. All five officers pleaded not guilty. Jocelyn Lavandier, the fifth officer, was not at today's hearing, but she did apply for the probation program. A murder suspect wanted in Canada has been apprehended here in Connecticut. The U.S. Marshals and York Regional Police say Kensworth Francis was wanted for a double murder from 2022. Two people were killed at a lounge and a third person was seriously hurt. There was a warrant out for his arrest spanning all of Canada. Just this week, the U.S. Marshals took him into custody in Hartford. Francis will be extradited back to Canada. We have an update now from Vernon. Over a year after a massive mill fire that destroyed a former factory that had been standing for more than a century, crews are beginning to clean up the rubble. The town of Vernon sent us photos and videos of their efforts to clean up the wreckage along Brooklyn Street. The former mill went up in flames in December of 2022. It had several owners in its 130 year history where companies manufactured everything from greeting cards to baseballs. Last year, investigators say they weren't able to pinpoint a cause of that fire. 
Connecticut College has a new president. The college in New London announced its 12th president today. Andrea Chapdelaine is currently the president of Hood College, which is a small private college in Maryland. She'll take over for, uh, for former president Catherine Bergeron, who announced her retirement after nine years as head of the college. That decision came after weeks of protests from the student body upset over a planned fundraiser at a Florida venue they argued was known for discrimination and anti-Semitism. Chapdelaine will start her tenure in July. The leaders at the Hartford nonprofit Angel of Edgewood say they are beyond frustrated. They woke up this morning to find a large pile of trash illegally dumped in their parking lot. They say one of their employees came in early this morning to prepare for an Easter event, and they found construction materials, sheetrock, and other garbage overflowing in their garbage. The founder of Angel of Edgewood says it's not the first time this has happened, but it is by far the most trash they've ever seen dumped there. People don't, don't understand like what this does um, to a small nonprofit organization like us. You know, we don't have the money or the manpower to get rid of this. Now, Scott Miller says she reported the issue to police and her state representative. She also says they are trying to get security camera footage from neighboring businesses to try and hold the people who did this accountable. A big night on the hardwood in Beantown for the UConn men's basketball team. The defending champion Huskies are on the hunt for back-to-back -back national titles, and this Sweet 16 <laughs> round uh, came against a familiar foe. UConn battling the team they beat last year for the championship, San Diego State. The Huskies and Aztecs duking it out at TD Garden in Boston. Nice New England spot for the UConn faithful to cheer on the Huskies. That game uh, just wrapped up a short time ago, and this one was a big win for the Huskies. Mm. Unexpectedly big. A second half surge for UConn puts them far above San Diego State for the win. 82 to 52. Oof. The final score winning by a round out to 30. <laughs> Fox 6 to win sports director Jonah Karp is in Boston waiting on the players and coaches to speak, and we're going to check in with him just as soon as that press conference wraps up at TD Garden. It's going to be a long trip back to San Diego <laughs> for the Aztecs. It sure is. Yeah. Good effort for the Huskies tonight. Wow.